So this is it. It has been a long time coming, but we finally reached our last episode. Frankly, a lot of you have kind of pushed us to this. With a bunch of you mentioning in the comments how badly you want me to make shoes. Oh, oh, did you think this was our last episode? No, 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 no. It's our last episode. That's right, today we're learning how to make lasts. So many lasts. It's not technically clickbait. It is our last episode. You just the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. Now, if you don't know, lasts are the forms of feet used to make shoes. Now, if you wanna be able to make something like leather shoes, it's really important that you have that shape to form the leather around. So that's what we're doing here today. We are going over, I think, six different ways to make lasts. By the way, all the materials and tools and stuff that we're using can be found in my link below. Before I get to that though, my analytics show that only 36% of you are actually subscribed to this channel. So please do me a solid and click that subscribe button, assuming you like the things we do here. All right, without much further ado, we'll jump right into it. Normally I'd say level up this skill, but we're, we're actually doing a bunch of different skills in this one. So we'll see how it lands. Trigger warning, there's a lot of feet in this episode. So like, if that's not your thing, you might want to skip this one. If it's very much your thing, maybe also skip it. I don't know, it's kind of weird. So first things first, you need to get some decent measurement of your feet. I start by just using my yardstick here and recording what the length of my foot is. Now keep in mind that you're probably gonna have one foot that's slightly larger than the other. You wanna use the measurements from that larger foot. The measurements I need though, are the widest part around the knuckles of my foot, the width of kind of the bridge area of your foot, and the width of your heel. I also take the width of my ankle, as well as the measurement from the floor to just above my ankle. Now to make my life easier in measuring these, I actually made some calipers just out of some pieces of wood I had laying around. You can go ahead and buy some calipers, or honestly, you can just kind of keep using the ruler if you want to. This just makes it easier to take all the various measurements. I just take those measurements and I compare them to what they would be on a ruler. To really make sure I'm recording these clearly, I just kind of trace around my foot to get the general shape of it. This gives me a nice kind of child's Thanksgiving turkey pattern to work with. Yeah, you, know, you trace, trace around your fingers. You know what I'm talking about. Now, you know when you go to try on shoes and you feel like where your toe sits against it? That little space that your toes are in is called the toe box. And you know, you don't want your toes like directly against the wall of that, right? You want to give yourself a little bit of space. So I just went in and measured about a half of an inch off of my big toe to mark that space and then drew that toe box in around my toes. Then I drew in my line so I can drop in all of those measurements that I made earlier. Now there's a three dimensional shape, so I can't just get away with it being just kind of the perimeter of my foot, right? I also need like the height of everything. So I just go back in and I do the exact same thing using my calipers to measure the thickest part of those knuckles of my toes there. Again, the thickness of the bridge, the space from the instep of my foot to the very back of my heel. These I dropped into a similar drawing here giving me kind of a whole picture of what my foot is shaped like. Cool, so now that we have all of those to work from, we can actually start building these things. Now the first kind of set of techniques we're gonna do is like a, like a sandwich technique here. We're just gonna take a bunch of things, glue them together, and then cut that shape out of it. For one of the first materials I'm using, I grab these pine boards here that were, I believe, one inch by five inches. I'm not positive, it just needs to be wide enough that your foot can fit on the damn thing. To give me the height I need, I cut out a bunch of these that I'm gonna stack on top of each other. I just laid these all out so I could evenly paint on wood glue onto the surfaces that would go together. And then I simply stacked and clamped them together so they can dry into a block. While that dried, I decided to do the same exact thing out of this insulation foam here. Again, I just cut blocks into a shape that my foot would be able to actually sit on, sprayed them with glue, putting a weight on top just to make sure it all kind of glued in place. Now, the glue I used was like a spray Gorilla Glue. Don't use that. There's a bunch of other glues that are more foam safe. I didn't realize it at the time, but it turns out that glue straight up melts foam. Everything still came out okay. It just had like left some voids that I have to fill later on. Still, don't, don't do it. But doing this left me with these two different blocks to work with, one of wood and one of foam. To get the shape exactly as I needed it, I cut out some more of those patterns that I made with my measurements so that I can glue them to the surface of my blocks. Once they were all glued up, it was time to get to cutting. The foam was dead easy because I could do it with just kind of like a little saw foam cutter here, just taking out slices, getting it down pretty close to the shape I needed. Then once I was close, I used a rasp just to define it a little bit more. Once I was happy with that side profile, it was time to actually get like the shape of the bottom of my foot put in. 
To do that, I followed the same exact thing, gluing the bottom kind of template on, and then using that blade to slice away any of the extra material. Then I was back to the rasp just to really clean it up and remove those tool marks. Finally, I hit it with some sandpaper to really smooth everything over and check that out. That came out pretty good, though it did have those voids that I talked about earlier from that spray adhesive. Even still using my calipers to check everything, they were exactly what my measurements had set. I also made sure as I went to constantly kind of keep going back because I could take more away. I just couldn't add more to it. That said, if you do make a last and it ends up being a little bit smaller, that's all right. You can actually add like little strips of leather or something to it temporarily to make it into the shape you want. So this isn't like a, it has to be perfect the first time. There are ways to play with it. Now to take care of those little voids and make it a little bit more perfect, I just busted out some of this DAP silicone here which I liberally spread into those voids and then smoothed it out with my finger. And check out how clean that looks. This is a last, right? Like that's perfect. And you, of course, you shape it for the kind of shoe you're looking for. Like this has a little bit more of a, a boot shape here in the toe box, but I can easily like trim that away if I want it to be a little bit more pointy or whatever. But yeah, I could totally form leather around that. That's pretty cool. And it was super easy to do. A little less easy is the wood. Now, if you have a nice big bandsaw though, it probably wouldn't be that hard at all. Unfortunately, the bandsaw I have is like a tabletop one and that block wouldn't fit underneath the arm. That means, I had to go ahead and try to do most of this by hand. In order to make this happen, I figured the best way to go about it is to make cuts coming from the top all the way down to just above my pattern. I started this with a handsaw to prove I could, but then finally just turned to the table saw to make sure all these cuts were like nice and perfect and as fast as I could do it. If you have more time than I do, you can totally just kind of hand saw it, but it'll be some work, let me tell you what. <laughs> Anywho, with these slices in place, all I had to do is go back in with a hammer and knock those chunks of wood out. Then I went back in with a chisel just to clean up all those little ridges that were left behind. Then again with my rasp there to really smooth out any of that uneven area. That was a lot of work. It was a significant amount of work, I'm telling you right now. Get yourself a bandsaw or some other way of cutting it. That was a pain in the ass. Anywho, at this point I turn it over and I glue on my other pattern and then do exactly the same thing. Using my saw to cut down to that pattern, using a hammer to knock all those chunks out, and then cleaning it off as best as I can. Once I had the general shape, I went back in with some chisels to really round out those edges and remove any uneven, unwanted material. Then to sand the whole thing, I just employed this flap disc on a drill so that I can follow the contour of my last and get everything looking as clean as possible. And check that out. And look at that, that's, that's my foot in wood. It is super solid too. This thing is gonna last for friggin' ever. And they're like exactly the same. I again went through, made sure all the measurements were right. And yeah, you could use this as like left foot, right foot. It'll be interesting to see if there are any changes I'll wanna make. Like maybe I need to narrow out the top here a little bit or whatever. But no matter what, it's gonna be easier to kind of take away than it would be to add some. So yeah, I'm super eager to test these out. Okay, using this kind of method, I have one more for you that's the easiest of all. And that's just using cardboard. To do this, we're gonna do basically the same thing by gluing a bunch of stuff together. But these ones I went ahead and cut out so that they were the exact shape of my tall pattern. Then I laid them all out, sprayed some adhesive on them, and stacked them all together into the width that I needed. Since they already had the exact shape I was going for, I just have to carve away kind of that bottom pattern. So again, I just stuck that to the bottom of it, and then used my little foam cutter knife here to saw away all the pieces that weren't needed. And this stuff is dead easy to cut through, cause you know, it's cardboard, super simple. I just took little chunks at a time until it was roughly into the shape I needed, and then again employed my rasp just to clean everything up and round off my edges. Now to make it more unified and a little bit stronger, I just went ahead and added some Mod Podge to this, really plastering it on. Then once that dries, I'm able to sand it, and it actually came out really good, like look at that, right? Sure, it's got like the little holes and voids and stuff, but when you're just draping leather over it, none of that's gonna show up anyways. And if you really want to, you can use like wood filler or something to fill that up, but look, like that's, that's nice. And again, dead simple, aside from waiting for the Mod Podge to dry, which because I plastered it on a lot, took a few hours, the whole thing probably took me like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes to shape. That's really easy. Okay, since we're halfway through our projects right now, I just wanna take a quick minute to talk about our sponsor, us, me, I'm, I'm our sponsor. It costs us a lot to run this because we always have to buy like materials and all that. And things like Patreon or visiting our merch store right down here, it's a super helpful way to make sure that we can keep doing this. 
So yeah, if you're interested in supporting us and want to help, consider doing either of those things. Or sharing our videos. That's a huge way to help too. Okay, back to it. So around the time I was maddeningly making these last, Maddie came to visit to help me shoot some other stuff as well. So since I want to make her stuff too, we decided to make some last for her. She started with the same thing, kind of tracing her foot on the paper and then just cutting that out. Then adding that little bit to the top for her toe box, which you can see in black here. Now, because the method we're using is going to actually mold her foot, that's really all she needs. Well, that and these pieces of leather here. These are just six ounce pieces of leather, one for the front and another for the back. Now you'll notice on my drawing that the front of my toes and also the heel are a little bit off the ground. I learned that in your last, you want that. You want your, your toe and your heel to be lifted a little bit, which makes sense. If you look like side profile on your shoe, they do have a, a little bit of a bend to them, right? Though I'll be honest, I don't know the science behind that. I just know what I read. <laughs> Though I imagine if you just kind of had it like perfectly flat footed, it would be uncomfortable. That sounds like it would be uncomfortable. So these are six ounce pieces of leather and one's gonna go to the front and two to the back which is gonna give her that toe and heel lift we talked about earlier. These she just taped into place where they'd go on that foot outline and then covered the entire thing in tape so that it was ready to be used in our mold. For our mold, we just kind of glued this box to this piece of plexiglass here. The plexiglass was just the flattest thing I had, though I didn't cut it out because I want to use that plexiglass for other stuff later on. Again, running this is very expensive. I want to I want to keep as much material as possible. I also have the front open up just so you can see what's happening here. Basically, she tapes that little template into place right in the middle of that box, then places her foot on it. Now to make that little toe box shape and the transition, we just used some of this clay, which we put into place and then smoothed out all around until it looked like what the toe box of a shoe should look like. Once that was all smoothed out, we went ahead and closed up that box so we can make the mold. Now the stuff we're actually using to make this mold is called alginate. It's non-toxic and what like dentists and stuff use to make the, the mold of your teeth. It's really cool and super fast drying. I made the mistake though of putting it in the bowl first and then trying to mix water into it. You definitely go the other way. Start with water and then slowly add the powder. It was real dumb. <laughs> Anyways, once it's all mixed up, I just kind of poured it around the foot, making sure there weren't any voids or anything. Then in around 15 minutes, it had firmed up and Maddie was able to actually slide her foot right out of that space. Now, because we started on that solid bottom there, we were actually able to take the entire mold and turn it over so that we can clean out any of that clay that was left over for the toe box there. Once we were happy with how clean that was, we put it back into place and rebuilt those walls around it so that it would keep its shape. I also cut this little board in the top so that the top of it wouldn't puff outwards. This is because the material we decided to use to fill this up was this Foam It 5 by Smooth On. It's just an expandable foam that actually like expands to be quite hard. Now I'm actually gonna be using some of this release agent here just to make sure it doesn't stick to the inside walls of that alginate. Then I just pour out equal parts of A and B from the foam, thoroughly combine them together and pour them into the mold. And within a few minutes, that fold expands to 10 times its size. This is why I wanted to have that frame in a way to push it down because I was afraid it would start to deform it as it pushed out. After cutting away the excess at the top, I was again able to turn this form over and just kind of pop that whole thing out. And look at that, that came out really cool. Especially after we cut away that flashing and just went ahead and sanded it. Though there were some spaces where the foam had expanded a little bit more than we wanted to. So to make it a little bit more uniform, we just busted out some of this wood filler here, which Maddie spread over the entire surface of the foot. And after sanding it nice and smooth, look at how cool that is. Again, just to add like an extra coating to like protect it, she just painted the entire thing with Mod Podge. And this is like perfect, look at that. From here to here, it is exactly her foot, right? And then we have the toe box that comes up. This is probably one of the most perfect ones because it's gonna be exactly her foot. This is really cool and it wasn't all that hard to do. Though there is an easier way if you don't wanna mess around with something like an alginate. To do that, we're actually gonna employ some of this little plaster wrap here. This is the same stuff they make like casts out of, right? And it's super cheap to get a whole bunch of it on Amazon. Anyways, to make it more workable, I just cut out little pieces of it. To use these, you simply dip them in water to activate the plaster and then place them on the subject's foot. Aiming for full coverage, I just kept putting them around, smoothing it as I went. I also did this in multiple layers so that it would be nice and rigid. After about 10 minutes, it was hard enough so that Maddie could run some scissors across the back cutting out a gap large enough to slide her foot out of. That slice we just covered back over with some more plaster paper, 
giving us a nice solid kind of sock o plaster. Now, in order to use this, we're actually going to make a plaster mold. This time around, I learned my lesson and I added the plaster powder to the water, slowly stirring it until it was the consistency I wanted, roughly like pancake batter and then simply poured it into the mold. Once that cured, I just cut all around that mold and ripped it away, leaving me with this perfect impression of Maddie's foot. So just like we did with our real foot, we built up that toe box with some clay. I liked how smooth this looked, so I ended up just covering the entire thing in clay. You don't have to, I just, I really liked how smooth it would look and figure it would come out that nice. Anyways, once that's all good, I did the exact same thing, covering over this new mold with that plaster paper. Then once that cured, I very carefully cut all around the perimeter so I can break it apart in two halves and take out that mold. I also use this opportunity to really smooth down any of that clay that's left over so there's no imperfections. Then I stuck it back together with some more plaster, sprayed some mold release on the inside, and again, used that foam to fill it up. And once it cured, I was able to rip away the plaster. Look at how cool that is. And it's perfect. It has almost the same dimensions. The only thing that's different is the little toe box because I designed them slightly differently. But otherwise, this is the exact shape of her foot plus toe box, right? I think that's pretty cool. Both were actually really easy. You could probably have it done like in the course of a day if you wanted to get both feet done. Though if you want easy, this last one is by far the easiest way to do this. And that's with the understanding of every shoe you have was probably made or at least designed employing a last which means the internal cavity of said shoe is the shape of a last. So I just went ahead and took this old boot here that was at the end of its usable life. This I put into place and kind of just taped it into shape so that it would match more closely the shape of my foot. This is easy to do with this one because I could actually unzip it and just slide my foot out. Though depending on the shoe you use, you might not be able to do this step. Anyways, I went back in with some tape just to smooth out the inside, close any gaps, and really lock out anything that that foam might be able to grab onto. Then just as before, I mixed up some foam and just kind of poured it into the shoe. Then once it cured, I carefully went around the shoe with a razor, cutting out the leather. And here's the second reason this is awesome, because since I was able to carefully cut this out, just along seam lines and stuff, I now also have a pattern to make a shoe with. Like aside from around the perimeter of it, I just cut out the threads on this one seam here and opened it all up. Now I can just cut all the rest of the seams here and use each one of these pieces to pattern my own boot that'll fit this last perfectly. I thought that was a neat little, little extra use of this thing. And the last itself turned out looking great. Look at that. Now before to fill everything, we used wood filler for some experimentation. I actually decided to use some of this foam clay here, just spreading it out as thin as possible so that it would be inside all of those gaps. Nice thing about this is once it cures, I can sand it down to make it nice and smooth. Leave me with, with this sucker here. The reason I wanted to try that is because I actually wanted one of these at least that I could pin right into. This way, maybe if I'm doing something fabric based or whatever, I can kind of wrap it around, pin it right to the last and then kind of use that shape. Just a thought, this is all like experimentation and fun. But look at that, that's perfect. And it was dead easy to do. Whew, okay, so that was, that was a lot of ways to make lasts. And there's a lot more. Some people turn them. There are some that have little hinges in them and stuff. It's by no means the most extensive, but like, it should get you started. But do me a favor, let me know if you've done this before, and if so, how you make them down in the comment section below. And if not, tell me which way you liked best and what do you think you're gonna try. I really hope to see you there, but in the meantime, keep leveling up, you. You've made it to the end screen. YouTube loves it when you do that. It's a fantastic way to support this channel. Another fantastic way to support this channel is by joining these people's noble ranks. These are our Patreon members and we can't do this without them. Like I said earlier, it's their support that makes it possible for us to do any of this. Special shout out, by the way, to our newest high tier Patreon member, Martin Tilly. And of course, a massive shout out to our Grandmaster tier Patreon members, WildFox99, Froggy, Dragon Designs, and Yuri Sastro. If you like what we do here and want to support us, consider joining our Patreon, link in the description below. Otherwise, you can click on one of these videos that YouTube thinks you'd like, and that really helps a lot too. Now, if you don't mind me, I've got shoes to make. So many shoes. One per last, at least. You can see how these work. 